Thank you, Senior School Chorus. A perfect segue into our presentation for our first honoree, Beth Wilman, PhD, class of 1994, earned her BA in astrophysics at Columbia University and her PhD in astronomy at the University of Washington. In 2005, as a postdoctoral student at New York University studying galaxy formation and dark matter, she discovered a new ultra-faint galaxy now known as Wilman 1. Nice. Woo! Yeah. Is a, you have a picture of Wilman 1 on the side there. This discovery has led to an entire new field of astronomy focused on the study of galaxies like these, which are believed to be the most numerous type in the universe. Through the years, Dr. Wilman has continued her research, particularly in the areas of galaxy formation and dark matter, where she has been active as a leader of the STARS, Milky Way, and Local Volume Science Collaboration. Dr. Wilman served as chair of the astronomy and physics departments at Haverford College, where she taught for seven years. Both beloved and respected by students, she received the college's three highest teaching awards. She has especially enjoyed mentoring students of all ages, encouraging their interest in science as much as Dr. Susan Zawacki inspired her here at Swickley Academy. In addition to her work at Haverford, Dr. Wilman has served as a James Arthur Fellow at the Center for Cosmology and Particle Physics at New York University and a Clay Fellow at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Recently, Dr. Wilman has become the Deputy Director of the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, known as the LSST Project. LSST is a billion dollar project being constructed on Cerro Pachan in Chile and is the highest priority in ground-based astronomy for the United States through the next decade. Unfortunately, Dr. Wilman is chairing a scientific conference in California today. Well, it's good that she's chairing it. Unfortunately, it means she's not with us today. Uh, but we welcome her mom, uh, Beth Bergman, who will come forward to receive the recognition on her daughter's behalf. Welcome to Mrs. Bergman. Let me come over here. On behalf of Swickley Academy and the Alumni Association, I am pleased and honored to induct Dr. Beth Wilman, class of 1994, into the inaugural Science and Technology Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello to everyone from Monterey. Hi, Mom. I'm disappointed that I'm not able to be there today, but I'm so grateful that Susan Sauer and Colia uh, were able to include me in the event, even though I'm out here in California. So last spring, I was humbled when Susan Sauer called me to let me know that I would be among the first inductees for this uh, Science and Technology Hall of Fame. But beyond that, her call also filled me with renewed pride for being a, a Sewickley alum, not just as I imagined all that I engaged with at Sewickley that uh, allowed me to accomplish what I did in science and technology, but also because the Academy was introducing this new Hall of Fame as a new demonstration of its commitment to the importance of science and technology in education and the importance of scientific engagement in our society. And I will tell you, out of curiosity, I did some Googling around to see whether this was a common thing in high schools going beyond the usual uh, athletics halls of fame and sometimes a fine arts halls of fame. And I'll say that Sewickley Academy was the only high school that I came across. I didn't try very hard. I didn't go very far past Sewickley in my Google search list, uh, but I was very impressed nevertheless. Sewickley is really a unique among its peers. Now, as you may have heard, I'm an astronomer. Um, what you might not have heard is that my job is the best job in the world. I study uh, the Milky Way galaxy and its cosmic neighborhood. And so if you take a look at a picture of a galaxy, oh, Maybe I should bring one up here. 
Okay, take a look at a picture of a galaxy. You see all of the stars in this swirly shape, and this is what we think of as galaxies. But actually, that bright part of a galaxy only occupies about one one thousandth of the volume of a galaxy. And so the thing that I study is the vast invisible ecosystem that extends far beyond those luminous uh, parts of the centers of galaxies. And I do that to learn about dark matter and the physics of galaxy formation. So not only do I have the best job in the world because I get to investigate the universe in those ways, but I love being able to uh, engage with a community of scientists and also to enable others to engage in scientific inquiry. My job now is as Deputy Director of the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope Project. And a big motivation for me to take this position, even though I was at a job at a liberal arts college that I enjoyed very much, is because I'll get to have a guiding hand in the development and the implementation of this next generation cutting edge telescope facility currently being built in Chile. And it's a facility whose data will not go into the hands of the privileged few at certain universities. Anyone with an interconnection, anywhere, uh, internet connection anywhere in the United States will be able to access the data from this facility. And when I was at Haverford College, most of my uh, most special moments there were when I worked with students in and out of the classroom, helping them wrestle with problem solving and computer code. And actually, I think even more so when I had the pleasure to advise students on a public outreach program in our observatory. And one thing I love about working with students engaging with public outreach is that any student, you could be a first year student, you could be a high school student, you don't even have to know that much astronomy. If you just care and you're excited to show up, everyone can come and feel like they've contributed something uh, individual and the sum of the student contributions are greater than um, the individual parts. Now, I wouldn't have had the luxury of this professional adventure if it wasn't for my education at the academy. So Swickley so impressed very early on to me the importance of community and in valuing ourselves as whole people, not just as scientists or artists or athletes. And the opportunities provided to me by Swickley so let me find the fire in my belly for scientific inquiry in a way that I don't know if I would have otherwise at another high school. So one great thing about Swickley so is the diversity of activities that everyone has the opportunity to engage in. And I was uh, not alone in choosing to engage in these activities. And so, for example, I took acting classes and was in a couple of plays in, in Ray Auditorium. Now, I was not given speaking parts in these plays for good reason, but the supportive community of the Academy it gave me the chance to try. And it forced me to push myself far beyond my comfort zone as an incredible introvert in high school, and then to realize it was okay to be. A, uh, that far outside my comfort zone. Another thing that we all do, right, as academy students is to participate in community service. And my primary community service uh, contribution was to work at a neighborhood center in the north side with kids after school to help them do their homework and give them a place to go for a couple hours while their parents were still at work. I had no idea how to interact with or mentor children. I was very clumsy. I cringe to look back at how I was at it. But you know, so Wickley encouraged me and that neighborhood center gave me the chance. And I will never forget those summer days and those uh, school afternoons helping those students. The different side of Pittsburgh that I saw, thanks to that opportunity, ingrained a permanent sense of duty to be kind and help others in me, which affects how I act as a scientist and how I engage with the community. My final example of how SA impacted me was that my physics teacher, uh, Mr. Beggy, invited me to join a Swickley Academy team to participate in a scientific computing event across different high schools in the Pittsburgh area. And not only that, but he asked me to lead our team. Now, I hadn't indicated interest. This uh, team project required us to write code in Fortran. I had never written a computer program before. But Mr. Beggy gave me the chance to try. And I'll tell you what, I never did debug my Fortran code, the central product that I was supposed to produce for this. But you know what? I would have stayed up all night in that computer room in the senior school if they hadn't made me leave to lock up. And that was the first time in my life I ever felt like, you know what, I want to stay up all night before I give up figuring this out. I want to do it. And then we went down to present our team results down at um, the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. And Mr. Beggy had asked me to give the talk in front of everyone. And I was sweating and I was miserable and I didn't want to get up in front of the room. And then I got up in front of that room 
and told them about the Fortran code that we had written to simulate gas particles in a box. And for the first time ever, I realized I love telling people about science and how excited I am to get to participate in science. So the moral of the story to all of you sitting in the audience, you know, take advantage of your academy education, push yourself beyond your comfort zone and know that you're part of a community that will make that okay. Be kind and helpful and inclusive. Don't just participate in your community, but contribute to it. Make others feel welcome. Find the fire in your belly by trying out all sorts of different things that you have the opportunity to do at the academy. And, you know, last but not least, uh, give others a chance to try. Because all those chances to try at stuff that I, quite frankly, was not very good at in high school has just really formed who I am as a person in a way that I'll be eternally grateful for. Thank you again so much for letting me join you today. Maybe sometime I'll be able to come by the Academy and tell you more cool things about the universe. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you.